Free falling objects. This section right here actually covers something that we spend more time on when we talk about two-dimensional motion. Here we're just going to talk about either dropping an object straight down or throwing an object and having it come down. Again, Galileo is most important for realizing that the acceleration of gravity is constant and obviously looking at the kinematic equations requiring constant acceleration this fact that gravity is constant in its acceleration allows us to solve for these types of problems very, very easily. Now the theory is that Gal the story is that Galileo dropped two unequal masses off of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. But his theory of gravity came from looking at inclined planes and rolling masses uh, of different sizes down the inclined plane um, remember, dropping something, things fall too quickly, and he didn't have any accurate way of timing. But using the inclined plane, we're able to slow things down. We actually do this for one of the experiments. We do it for experiment three in the laboratory, where we keep our inclined plane at about a five degree angle to slow down this, this, the acceleration. On an inclined plane, the acceleration, although you've got to take into account rotational inertia, we do that at the end of the chapter, but the acceleration on an inclined plane is roughly equal to the acceleration of gravity times the sine of the angle. So you can really slow down gravity doing this this way. Now free fall means the object is moving only under the, the influence of gravity. Air resistance plays no role. In real life, if something falls fast enough, air resistance will decrease its acceleration and this doesn't work. Okay? But again, free fall means there's no air resistance, there's no other force acting on this object. This object is just accelerating under the influence of gravity and nothing else. If that is the case, everything would fall at the same rate. If we could eliminate air resistance, a feather and a rock would both hit the ground at the same time. A feather and a coin. Now, we use, for the acceleration of gravity, either 9.8, 9.81, or 9.80 meters per second squared, or we can round it up to about 10 meters per second squared if um, we want to do uh, a more estimated uh, calculation. But again, understand the acceleration is always downward. And that's important for when you're determining your velocity. Uh, typically, the convention is velocity upward is positive, velocity downward is, is negative. So uh, your acceleration would actually be negative g or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If we use 10 meters per second, uh, per second as our acceleration, we notice that even in a short amount of time, things get going uh, downward at a very high rate of speed. After one second, it's falling at 10 meters per second at 22 miles per hour. After five seconds, it's traveling over 50 meters per second or over 100 miles per hour downward. So you can see, you don't have to fall for very long to reach a fairly high rate of speed and roughly after two seconds you're traveling almost 50 miles per hour. Generally, depending on the surface, if it's a fairly hard surface, your chances of surviving a fall at 50 miles per hour is pretty, pretty grim, about a 50-50 chance in the best case scenario. But again, we can see this, the speed of fall, Remember our old equation for kinematics was V equals V0 plus G plus AT. Here, the speed would be equal to the initial speed. Normally, we're, we're dropping from rest, so we can in, ignore initial speed. Times acceleration times time. That's how we got these figures here. And that, again, is estimating the acceleration of gravity to be 10 meters per second squared. Now, distance of fall. We have the equation, the kinematic equation, that said x is equal to v0t plus one-half at squared. So our distance, with no initial velocity, would be one-half the acceleration of gravity times time squared. This is how far you fall in a given amount of time. If you want to turn it around, how long does it take you to fall a given distance? Well, we can solve for t in this equation and do the same thing. And again, notice you travel quite a distance in a short amount of time when falling, okay? If you were to fall 145 feet, or about 44 meters, it would take you about three seconds to make that fall, okay? Hopefully, 
you're landing in an airbag of some sort. Uh, because again, at that high rate of speed, uh, you wouldn't have a great chance of, of surviving. So again, objects thrown downward, we typically would say that the, the velocity is uh, negative. In this case, again, our acceleration is downward, also negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, if it's thrown upward, the negative acceleration with a positive velocity means it's becoming less and less and less. It would reach some maximum height and then begin to fall back downward. Again, you can use the kinematic equations for um, you know, any of these types of calculations. You'll get the results that you see here. But we'll handle this more in the next chapter when we talk about projectile motions. Okay? Here's something that's interesting. Suppose someone throws a ball straight up with a speed of 30 meters per second. At the same time, another person throws one down with a speed of 30 meters per second. The question is, which ball will be traveling faster when it hits the ground? The one thrown straight up or the one thrown straight down? Ignore air resistance for this case. Okay? Well, the answer would be both would hit the ground at the same time. I'm sorry, not at the same time, at the same speed. The reason for this is, if you throw something up at 30 meters per second without air resistance, it reaches that same point again, going downward, also at 30 meters per second. Okay? So throwing it down at 30 meters per second, or throwing it up at 30 meters per second, without air resistance, it's going to hit the ground at the same speed. Um, and this is exactly the same question again. A uh, person standing at the edge of the cliff throws one ball straight up, another one straight down at the same speed, neglect air resistance. The ball on the ground, the ball to hit the ground below the cliff with a greater speed, again, is neither. That's the argument that we made before. Here's a quick fun thing. Have somebody take a ruler, suspend it, and at a random time drop it. You Okay, try to grab that as quickly as possible once it starts falling. The distance that the ruler falls is related to your reaction time. So practice this a few times. Using the kinematic equations, we know it will travel a distance y of one half the acceleration times time squared. Okay? The time it takes to fall is equal to your reaction time, which will be twice the distance divided by gravity divided by uh, well, square root. If it only moves 10 centimeters when it's being dropped, we plug 10 centimeters in here. 2 times 10 is equal to 20. 20 divided by 10 gives me 2. That would give you a reaction time of 0.14 seconds. Yeah, I'm sorry, not 20. <sighs> um, go back to that. 2 times 10 centimeters, that's 0.1 meters, so 0.2 divided by uh, 10 roughly gives me 0 0.02. If we do the square root of that, that gives me a time of 0.14 seconds. Typically, the reaction time for a human being is about uh, a tenth of a second. 